what's going on. Uh, just reaching out to you from the office. Um, I guess today we're going to do uh, 10 lies that you have continued to hear or say about me. And uh, I'm just going to respond to them, I guess. Uh, these are the 10 top lies that you guys keep saying in the comments. So the first lie that everybody talks about quite a bit is, is my brother owns the business and to kind of continue that, my brother gave me the business. I, I really don't know where that came from. And I, and I really don't understand how you guys continue to say that. First, nobody's ever owned this business except for me. Second, nobody's ever given me this business except for me. Um, nobody's ever loaned me any money. Nobody's ever provided me anything to uh, have this business. Um, I don't know where that continues to come from, but whether you want to listen to me or not, believe me or not, I don't really care. But at the end of the day, I've always owned the business and nobody else ever has. Um, and nobody sure fucking gave it to me. So anyways, next question. So the next lie that I've been reading lately is, is I'm going to lose everything because I have uh, invested my business into assets or funds and utilized those funds or my business and vehicle titles against a loan that I've taken out. Uh, so as I said in the first question, nobody's ever loaned me a single dollar. I've never applied for a loan through my business. I've never applied through, for a loan through my name. I've never had uh, a loan at all issued to me for my business. Um, everything's always been bought cash. Um, I've bought everything myself and then has over time fixed it, renovated it, put it together. The only thing I've never done, and, and I've said this so many times and it's confusing that it's still something that we talk about, um, the only thing I don't do is paint the vehicles. So I, I don't paint the cars, I don't paint the motorcycles, and I don't print the stickers, I apologize, I forgot. I don't print the stickers. So I don't paint and I don't print. Um, but everything else I do myself with my own hands. Um, only one vehicle was ever wired and put together for us, and that was done out of the kindness of their heart amazingly um, but again never once have I applied for a loan or asked for a loan for the business I don't know where that comes from the next question or statement or lie that we've been reading is uh, that I did lies or activities or fraudulent activities to get a home loan now, if there's anyone out there watching that's a mortgage broker or a real estate agent, I hope you post some comments and explain to the rest of the idiots and morons that watch um, that that is almost an impossibility, that banks have a very long process of verifying who you are, how much money you make, where it comes from, uh, before they ever give you a loan. Um, a bank is not going to loan you almost uh, almost a half a million dollars um, for a house that you're not going to be able to repay. Um, they're not going to loan you the money to go buy a house if you don't have the proper documentation um, and records to show that you're able to afford it. Uh, so only uh, the real estate agents, agents, um, those real estate state certified agents and those mortgage broker officers or mortgage officers, crazy how they have those terminologies attached to their name. But anyways, only they, including people that work at banks um, and real homeowners, 
you know, the funny thing is, is probably the people that are talking shit about me owning a home probably don't own their own home. Um, that would be the my first guess. Because if you knew the vetting and the shit you have to go through to get your mortgage, uh, you would know that you really can't lie to the banks about how much you make or where it comes from. Anyways, so yeah, no lies there and own my own house. So the other one is is a kind of the same ballpark, uh, although it is 10 questions or 10 lies that you guys keep hearing or saying. Um, don't own a house in Egypt. I, I don't even really know how to answer that. Um, I, I guess that all of you amazing people that don't speak Arabic and don't have access to Egyptian government information and just go off whatever you see on the internet and whatever Vittler says in his reports because that statement was made by Vittler uh, is mind-numbing fucking confusing. Uh, yeah, so I've owned a house in Egypt for quite some time. Uh, beautiful home gorgeous home in Alexandria, uh, right by the Med. Um, I go there every year for almost two to three months, every year. Uh, I, I, I just haven't been able to go the last two years. Some could say because of the case, that's true. And some could say because of COVID, who knows? But at the end of the day, I haven't been able to go to Egypt and spend time with my family or see my home in the last two years because of everything that's going on. But we do own a very beautiful home in Egypt. So the next one that I, I, I it's just, I love, and I, I love hearing. And I'll, this will probably lead into um, a video we'll do soon, uh, probably a reaction video to blackmailing your mom. So, you know, I, I haven't really seen the video to remember exactly what I said under duress while I'm talking to my mom. Uh, but... One of the things that I know I said was we need to get the family together. And that's true. We need to get the family together there to um, get the money that we've invested in multiple projects and, and, and things that we're working on investments together. Um, I didn't mean mom, come get me out of jail. I didn't mean, Hey mom, I need money for my lawyer because I don't have any. Um, basically what I was saying was, uh, especially since I was a little stressed out that day, uh, that I needed my family to come together so we could get some of the money back to me that I have invested along with my other family members that have had and put in multiple uh, investments. When I said we need to get the family together uh, for the money, for some reason, most of you morons and idiots and I guess people that don't have good relationships with your families. Um, I, I have a great relationship with my family. In fact, my family watches my daughter and on the weekends and, and uh, travels with us to Egypt. In fact, for our my birthday, I, one of you smart asses asked a comment about getting the family together. Um, and in fact, two of my family members from Egypt flew in for my birthday. Uh, two of my family members flew in from San Diego and DC for my birthday. So yet uh, the family is very, very close and well knit together. Um, we just have multiple business investments throughout the United States. Um, again, that would be for families that are close and, and, and do well together. This one's hilarious. Ramsey in the charging affidavit that he then submits to a judge later that morning, the next day, states that I spontaneously confessed to the crime or I, and I spontaneously confessed to where my office was and I spontaneously told him that the videos were on the computer. Has anyone else watched the real world video? I mean, real world did release the interview. Did anyone else watch that? It's the same video that was attached later on to where Photo admits that he altered the videos on the computer for fun. Uh, did, did you guys see that video? Because I'm a little confused because in that video, Ramsey says, where's your office? And I know for a fact, I said multiple times, I, I really don't know where it is. We, we just moved. Uh, we just moved to a new address. So I, I don't know what that address is. 
Isn't that crazy? I, I, I keep saying that over and over. And then he says, uh, where's the office? And, and again, I, and I say, I, I really don't know where it is. So when did I spontaneously tell him where the office was or spontaneously tell him the stuff was on the phone or the office computer? Which is funny because we're going to lead with this into something else. You know, um, for those that know what Life 360 is, you'll know how Life 360 works. And you'll know that the day that Ramsey arrested me, that he did this nice interview with me where I supposedly spontaneously told him where my office was and all the videos were on a computer. What he didn't say in his statement, because then I think the judge would probably have a problem, was how he spontaneously took my phone out of his out of my bag that he took as evidence and activated my phone without a warrant. My wife is telling me that the, she knows that my phone's being used illegally while she's on the phone with me. And she's saying, how is your phone being used if you're in jail? Because you're calling me right now and your phone's being accessed and somebody's reviewing the coordinates for your office and the address for your office. And I say to my wife, you mean the phone that was just confiscated from me and put into evidence? There's no way that they got a search warrant that fast. It takes days, not less than three hours. Those that would love to believe that there's countermeasures. Um, in fact, we're going to use this also to lead into something that's going to come up very soon. And he also has his own uh, website, which deals with polygraphs and how they're lied and used illegally and and um, he's been doing it for some time and and uh, again he he's in DC and he says there's no such thing at all as a countermeasure detection or countermeasure expert um, we have that of course recorded and videoed and um, and we'll be having his article here in the next couple of days yeah so negative 37 keep on rock on brother yep uh, that's why I passed the one here with the gentleman that's actually still with the sheriff's office that does it for the sheriff's department um, and wasn't trying to get national ratings. Uh, yeah, you can keep negative 37 all you want. Uh, that was fun. And one of the other ones is, is uh, I, which is new, when you guys keep saying one of the other lies is I don't pay my employees. Well, first off, I don't have employees. I have contractors. Um, and they're, they're uh, independent contractors, which means in essence, if they don't show up, then they don't work. If they don't work, they don't get paid. So an independent contractor sure the hell isn't going to come to a job and work if he's not going to get paid. And since we've been doing it for 11 years and for some reason, all of our independent contractors keep showing up to work. Apparently I pay my guys. Uh, what you might be getting confused is uh, a lot of people will say they're not getting paid, but they haven't turned in their gear to get their last check. Um, just like any other business. Um, I don't know where you work. Uh, I think even at McDonald's where your job is, uh, you have to turn in your shirt and your name tag and your keys uh, to get your last check. Just like any business in the United States, um, I don't believe you get your last check um, until you turn in the things that are property of the business that you're contracting for or working for. Um, so yeah, we pay our contractors. We've never missed ever actually paying our contractors. In fact, one of the things you can talk all the shit you want about me, but one of the things is I pay my bills and I pay my people. Um, I don't have my wallet in front of me, but I have over 37 credit cards and American Express, black, um, platinum cards. And the reason why I have those is because I pay my bills. The number one question that we get is, or lie statement, is that I'm racist. I'm racist. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. 
Uh, I know I'm white as can be. I mean, I, I see it. You see it. I, I can't get any whiter. I mean, I'm a white boy. Uh, the sun hurts me because I'm so white. I get that. But I'm so far from racist that it, it, it's comical. Don't even know where that comes from, being the fact that my wife is met, courted, and married in Egypt. Egypt's in Africa. Um, I go to Africa and Egypt every year for two to three months. Um, uh, couldn't tell you why you're not really clear on that. I don't know. Um, but yeah so i'm gonna add this in there um and i and i'm gonna i'm gonna go over it with you so one of the lies that's so funny to me um so i don't know if you remember when you guys were growing up uh there was a, a commercial on the radio you know uh my baloney had a first name and blah 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 do you guys remember that song and it was on the radio all the time and my baloney had a first name yeah, so one of the biggest lies that's going on and on and on, it's confusing as fuck to me, um, is baloney girl. Baloney girl. Just like that. Baloney. Bullshit from real world. Below fucking Lee. I mean, are really guys? Are you guys that dumb and to believe that the state government and the state law enforcement would allow a quarter of what you heard on that story. Um, nobody even knows who that person was that they hired to do the interview. Um, I mean, come on. You think the state of Florida, who wants me so badly right now for impersonating, would have allowed me to just go home that day? Had a quarter of what she said in that fake interview was real? Like right now, I can verbatim sit you down, walk you through every arrest and every reason something happened and every lie that Vittler and Ramsey have put on charging affidavits. I don't need somebody to tell me, hey, do you remember that? Do you remember this? Do you remember that? Yeah, I can sit you down and it's been two years ongoing of two years of this. I can sit you down and tell you exactly where I was standing, how I was standing. Do you want to know why? Because it's a traumatic event or a, an event that's happening in my life. Yet, Baloney with a first name, she had somebody in the background that kept saying, Hey, do you remember this? Do you remember he said this? Do you remember he did this to you? And she's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. Wait a minute. You forgot one of the most supposed traumatic experiences in your life and you need somebody to remind you what happened never mind that we have the documents from the actual courthouse because i'm sure i paid the judge and all of them to lie for me right do you think that the sheriff's office would have ever let me have my business from day one they knew who i was don't believe all the other bullshit you see on the internet we sat down with them the first week that Metro State was going into existence. We sat down with them at the sheriff's office and we sat down with their operations unit and we talked to them and they told us, don't wear white shirts, don't have red and blue lights, and uh, don't have any words that say police or sheriff. Holy shit. You mean they quoted the statute to us and that's exactly what we did. And we never wore white shirts. So they knew who I was from day one. There was no confusion about who owned Metro State. The last bit of tidbit information I'm going to say, and we'll probably edit it out or I don't know what we'll do because it is very detrimental to my safety and my life. There's a lot of people that continue to talk shit about me. And they continue to talk shit like they know exactly what they're saying or what they know. But here's my question of the day without going into too much to get me into trouble. 
just because somebody's been retired for 20, 30 years, do you think you have clearance? Or do you think any of the other ones that are talking shit about me have clearance? You haven't stopped to ask yourself, how do I continue to own and afford what I have? And how do I continue to be home with my family? Besides Amir, maybe people don't have the clearance that they say they do. With that, guys, love talking to you guys. Again, my fans, we're moving up. Throwing this out there. Um, so we're going to do some live streaming. Some of you have requested it. Some of you have asked. Um, but we're going to do it in a safe manner. We're going to do it the right way uh, because I can't give you guys locations and I definitely can't tell you what escort we're going to be doing or where we're going to be at, some shit like that. Um, there's too many dumb fucks that would cause problems and hurt people. Um, and then, of course, we would have Pennywise, I'm sorry, Viddler in the bush, you know, waving with, with, the, um, with the balloon. I hear you using that horn, Jeremy. I hear that horn. Keep beeping that horn, Jeremy. Whew, that gives me creeps. Um, anyways, uh, so between the crazy people and Pennywise and, and the whole creepy show shit going on behind bushes, um, we can't really go into too much, but we will let you know we're going to be doing a live stream. And uh, we're going to work on getting you guys badges for those that want to join the team. Um, I didn't even know you could do this shit, um, but they're letting me know you guys can get like badges if you subscribe or join the team. Um, we're going to get you little motor badges um, so my little motors can keep up with us uh, and you guys can, you, you know, ask your questions. Um, we're going to do live streaming. I'm going to do what I can to answer your questions. I also am going to do what I can to an answer your questions as much as I can. Um, if I stupidly do this live stream while kind of working in escort, I won't be able to answer questions as freely, um, but uh, it more than likely will be on the road while I am live streaming. Uh, so with that said, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's topics. Um, pretty easy, laid back day. Love talking to you guys. Motor One's rolling.